Yo, good morning, friendos. Let me ask you a question. Do you like breakfast? How about, do you like this breakfast? Do you like coffee? I like coffee. My favorite coffee is my home brew cold brew. Cold brew coffee. It's actually like the god of coffee. I could have gone outside to like a diner. I could have bought a egg and cheese sandwich. Uh, I could have bought cold brew coffee, which is yeah, really expensive for no reason. I could have had someone else do it for me. Um, and it would be more expensive. It would be time consuming, right? I would have to go outside. Oh, that's great. Uh, real quick, I want to tell you guys how you can make your own cold brew. You ready? I'm going to teach you how to do it at home. Fill this jar with coarse ground coffee about a third of the way. Dark roast coffee. And how you do that, you're going to have to research that on your own. And then the other, thir the other two thirds, you're going to put water. And then you take the jar and then you put it in the fridge for 18 to 22 hours and then maybe halfway through make sure you're gonna stir the jar a little bit make sure that it's nicely mixed and the water is interacting with the coffee and the next day you open the jar and then you have to filter out the grounds how you do that I'm not gonna tell you because part of the theme of this video is not to show or give a man a fish it's to teach a man to fish right but why do I tell this story? Oh, there it is. The reason I tell this story is because there is a lot of talk. Oops, I overcooked it slightly. Oh, but look at that. That's beautiful. That Look at that pattern. A nice homemade sandwich. It tastes good. You know, you get your energy for the day. I didn't have to go out for it. It's convenient. I have all the things I need, need at home to make this sandwich. Bread, cheese, eggs, whatever. We make this from home, and it tastes great. It does all the things that a breakfast needs to do. What would be wrong with doing this yourself from home? Now, let's say comics, same thing. I make my comics from home. And then the reason I'm making this video is because I'm about to print somewhere in the realm of my thousandth comic. I passed it a little while ago. Uh, and there you go. I passed a thousand uh, sold uh, with my new printer, and I didn't do a special video to commemorate the occasion, so I thought I would do a short print run because I'm fulfilling a bunch of orders now, and I'll show my process and some of the thinking behind it. But the key to the whole conversation is make your stuff from home. You can do some trial and error and learn how to do it yourself. You don't have to go on to a third party and deal with all these problems that they're going to give you. You can do it all from home. It's fun. It's fun, and it's valuable because it's handmade, homemade, and your customers might appreciate that. My joke was control P. You got to just hit control P on your computer. Remember to control your P. So what I'm going to first do is on the printer here, live, I'm not... Uh, not going to speed up the footage or anything. This is how long it takes to print one copy of a comic book. And I'll show you the comic in a second. I'm pressing all the buttons now. There's going to be a warm-up period. Now, to speed this up, I actually wouldn't just print one copy. I'd try to print in bulk. So I'd print maybe 10 or 20 books at once. So the warm-up period was about 5-10 seconds. And now the printing has started. Not sure if you can hear my voice. And while it's going on in the background, I'm going to show what the finished product looks like. Take it out of the bag here carefully, if I can. So this is what the finished book looks like, actually. You can see it's a glossy cover. Oh, 
the print finished already. So glossy, I did glossy this time because last time I didn't and I really regretted it. I, I love the way this looks. And my favorite part of this cover is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, and then there's a gold flourish there. It comes out of a pen, a special pen, you know. But, um, oh, and there's a little bit on the rim of her hat too. Gorgeous. Or is there? Maybe this one doesn't have it. But each cover has its own hand done uh, pattern. Um, I'm going to quickly print a cover now. So the one copy of the book took less than a minute to print, basically. So times 10, times 20, right? 20 minutes, not even, it's way less than 20 minutes. To print 20 books is like five minutes. Hit start, hit control P. You know, I, I joke about control P, but prostate health is nothing to shake a finger at. I know a lot of guys going through their midlife crises were making fun of me for printing books at home, but you got to control your P. You got to press the button, the magic button, to make sure there's no lumps. Wait a second. <laughs> Don't be mad at me that you can't control your P. Oh, it's done already. Let's see what that looks like. That's a handsome cover right there. Very nice. Let's see what the black and white insides look like. That's what page one looks like. Because of the way they're printed, it's actually hard not to do spoilers. Uh, believe me, there, no spoilers. It looks super good. Looks great, actually. And now I'll show you guys how I do the assembly and stuff. I uh, switched to a desktop mic for this part because I needed my hands free. All right, so I folded the book in half using my bare hands, and now I'm using a folding tool to get the a nice sharp crease on the spine. That's very necessary. Now we're moving on to the covers. It's basic lamination process, nothing special. I'm using a basic laminator and uh, basic lamination sheets. As far as I know, there's pretty much one standard. The fitting is important, so I'm taking extra care. I've already signed the book and added the gold flourishes, so now I'm just sealing it. And there's going to be additional steps after this. I'm going to actually speed up the lamination process in a second. Make sure there's no bubbles. Feed it through the machine. And I've sped up this footage by six six times something like that it's a fairly long process but uh, that's why i do it in batches uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to be doing this process forever but for now it seems to work and i like the way it turns out so in small batches this is totally doable and as you can see the book is now laminated the next step is i will take a blade and score the inside spine or right, first i'm going to cut off the right edge of the page uh, for easier stapling. Normally I would use a cutting board here. I forgot. Just cutting off the laminate there. And now I'll take a ruler and metallic edge and lightly press just to score the inside uh, edge of the spine so that I could fold the page or the cover and get a really nice sharp spine. basic fold with my bare hands. You got to be careful uh, in the middle there. You might get some uh, an unintended scar on the page, so you got to be careful. I'm pressing down with the folding tool. The goal here is to get a really sharp spine, basically. I assemble a book. And normally I would do this times 10, times 20, however many pages I have on the table at a time. Over there on the right is uh, 10 copies. Now this stapler is not ideal, but because of the unusual size of this book, uh, I wasn't able to use my uh, right hand stapler, which is what I prefer. But it worked, this worked. It's a long reach stapler for anyone's curious. And this is my uh, guillotine cutter, which you can cut pretty much a book of any thickness. It's an amazing tool, I recommend it for anybody trying this out. 
and I am eyeballing the cut. Normally, I wouldn't recommend this, but it doesn't do a perfect right angle if I uh, push the book flush against the back of the guillotine. So I don't know if I would recommend this one for everybody, but uh, if you're confident in your cutting skills, eyeballing it, uh, go for it. And the reason that I uh, cut the book, every book needs to be cut, is because when you print, there's always going to be a gutter on every page. Because not all printers do borderless printing. And that's it. That's really it. Uh, that's the whole process. Once the book is cut, I inspect every book, make sure that the margins are okay, there's no big problems, final inspection, and then I put it in a bag. This is an actual book that will be going out to somebody, so I don't know if you'll recognize it or not, but there you go. That's your book, sir or madam. There you go. Looks great. Nice and clean. I do not need to put a backing board on these because uh, the way that I'm packing them in the Gemini mailers is uh, pretty secure. And then we're putting it together with Mary Sue because someone ordered both books. Thank you so much. And that's a stack that's going out today, actually. Finally, one more inspection just to show off the book a little bit on the interiors. At this point, I'm basically <laughs> going to say if you guys are interested in this book, it's on Etsy. The link will be in the description. Uh, I will be putting up uh, samples on Twitter if you want to read through the book before you decide whether or not to buy it. Uh, I can guarantee that the quality is excellent, more excellent than most comics that you'll see on a shelf. It is handmade, if that's valuable to you. The quality is good, quite good. The story is good, if you ask me, but I'm biased. Again, links in the description. And yeah, I'm very proud of this book. It's part one of four. Um, whoever buys a copy, I'd love to hear what you think of it. Please tell your friends and whoever. And uh, yeah. As for why I don't talk about the specifics of, you know, what printer I use and all that stuff, I don't think. My basic feeling is that if I have to tell people what printer to buy, like, first of all, I don't think mine's like the best in the world. It's fine, but I can do better. You know, there's there's other ones I would have rather bought. But um, basically, look, if I have to tell anyone what printer to buy, what paper I use and all that stuff, it's like, if you need to be told, you probably shouldn't buy one. Uh, and that's pretty much the bottom line is uh, there's a lot of trial and error and experimentation that has to happen uh, with this equipment. And I still have not mastered uh, the equipment. I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm sure that the quality could be even better in the future. If there's one uh, message in air quotes that I would want people to walk away from this video from, it's you can absolutely make a comic at home. There's nothing stopping you. You can do this with any laser printer that you can find at like a Staples or a Best Buy. The only difference between a printer like that and what I'm using is the size of of the paper, the maximum print size. So the printer that I'm using, the max I think is 11 by 17. And there's a tray, a bypass tray that can go up to 12 by 18. But the standard print size on paper is 11 by 17. Um, but most consumer models that you'll find at a Staples or Best Buy are eight and a half by 14 max. So you can still make your own books. The size will be different. But if you're, uh, if you're the type of person to experiment, maybe you can try out different binding options. And I'll do videos about that another time. But there's, there are many ways to bind a comic. You don't just have to use staples in the middle. Uh, you can do it any number of ways. So uh, there's really nothing stopping anyone listening from printing their own comics at home, especially black and white comics. Uh, the only limitation really is your willingness to experiment. And uh, anyone who's willing to do DIY stuff, you know, I always joke with myself. Uh, if I make a mistake, I say, oh, that's just R&D money. You know, if I, you know, blow 
five dollars ten dollars here or there it's whatever I, I learned something so you got to be willing to uh, lose a few dollars in your own education but in the end it will be worth it um, it certainly is more worth uh, learning on a consumer model printer than spending thousands of dollars on like a super printer and then not knowing how to use it because if you have problems with those super printers and you contact me with your problems <laughs> i certainly cannot help you i'm not i'm not able to do tech support uh but um yeah i, I want everyone to be encouraged you if you have a laser printer at home you already have all the tools necessary to get this done. The only limitation is paper size. You know, this is just one more tool in your tool belt. I'm not saying it's right for everybody, but, uh, you know, and I'm really proud about uh, how these are turning out. So I hope this video was informative. Obviously, you could leave a thumbs up and all that stuff. Make sure you're subscribed. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Uh, please check out the book.